Hey guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to make a simple treasure chest box in Blender 2.93 and um, you can see this one here is very basic and I didn't even add like a little keyhole here or any little latches on the side. I'm just showing you kind of like the fundamental um, way to make the overall thing that looks like a treasure chest and you guys can use this technique and definitely embellish it and improve upon it so if you think this looks cool and this is something you'd like to make keep watching the tutorial and as always i will be making the blend file available on my patreon which you guys can check out and i really do appreciate all the support i've been getting there as well so um without wasting any more time um let's make this guy over here So I've gone ahead and opened up a new scene in Blender 2.93. I'm just going to simply select all of the default objects. I'm going to hit X and just delete those guys. So now we're going to go Shift A and we're going to go to our mesh options here. And we're just going to simply add in a cylinder and we'll just leave the um, settings as they are. So let's hit one to go into our front orthographic view. And with the cylinder selected or active, we're going to tab into edit mode. And with all of this geometry selected, just make sure it's all active. We're going to hit um, R y 90 and we're going to hit enter so in edit mode we've essentially rotated it 90 degrees on its y axis okay so let's now go ahead and hit z and go to our wireframe and we're just going to select all of these bottom parts okay so anything below our floor we want to select and we're going to hit x and just delete those vertices that's leaving us with half a um, cylinder here which is fine um, but we want to also go ahead and just go to our modifiers and we're going to add a simple mirror modifier for this one here and we're going to be mirroring it on the x which is fine so let's just in our front view here just select half of these verts here to select them and once you have them active we're going to go g x and just move them in like this all right and at the moment they're parting because they're not clipping together so make sure you enable your clipping then you can go g x and just move them in together again and they should clip together so now if you hit g x again and you try and move them they're not moving because you have clipping enabled so go and hit one to go back into your front orthographic view and um, what we're going to do now actually let's just go into wireframe again we're just going to select these bottom verts so all the bottom verts are selected and we're just going to go e to extrude and Z, and we're going to bring it down, um, let's say about that much, almost the height of the actual top of the box, maybe just the same, something like that. And then we're going to hit um, A just to select all of this. And we're going to go G, X, and we're just going to move it out a little bit. Now, this doesn't have to be any specific kind of length. If you want a bit of a longer box, you can do it. If you want a bit of a shorter one, you can do it. It really depends on what you're going for. I'm going to go with something round about here. And you can kind of look at the grid spacing here. See on my floor? That gives you an idea of what I'm working with here. So you can kind of see I have one and a half almost with the grid space here for, for this guy. So with that done, I'm simply going to go and um, just go to my edge select here. I'm going to hold, click on this edge here. Holding and shift, I'm going to select the edge in the back. I'm going to hit F to fill that face. Then I'm going to select this edge, holding and shift, select the edge opposite of it. And I'm going to hit F to fill that. And now I'm just going to go and shift alt click on one of these edges. And it's going to loop select it. So let's just try hitting F just to fill it for now. Just cheat a little bit. That should be okay for what we're trying to do. We're going to try to make the kind of outer metal part of the box anyway here. So let's not worry about that too much. So what I might just do here is just go to my... Um, Actually, let's just stay in edge select here. So what we want to do is we want to kind of create like these bars, these metal bars that bend around the box. So we're going to come over one of these edges here. We're going to go Control R. You should see this yellow line appearing. Now that yellow line is not a piece of geometry yet. It's just a telling you what it'll look like. So what we want to do is we want to just roll our middle mouse button once, and we're going to see it nest now two of them. If you roll it a bunch of times, you can see it's more. But just two cuts like that, and you just click, and then you can go G. X and just move it on to the side. So we're going to move it up to about here and then we're going to deselect shift alt just select this edge here by itself by clicking on it and then we're going to go G X and just move that whole row um, to about here should be fine okay and then while we have that still active we're going to go control B so control B and we're going to create a bevel and we're going to make the bevel about that much Okay, so you're not seeing it at the moment. What this is going to be, we're going to extrude these um, or we'll give them some thickness later on. They're going to look like the straps that go, or metal straps that go around the box. 
So let's add in a little bit more information here. We're going to come to this edge here. We're going to go Control R, click G, Z, and just bring that down to the bottom here to create a bottom part about that much. And then we're going to go to our face selector. We're now going to go Shift and just select these three faces on the side while we're holding in Shift. And now we can, in fact, I'm just trying to think about it in the most practical sense. Um, okay, let's hit I. So hit the I key and that'll inset the whole thing. So we're going to inset it um, about that much. Should be okay. And then what we're going to do is we're simply going to select this face here, holding in... Um, okay, maybe not yet. Let's just hover over this edge one more time. Control R, click, and then go G, Z, and just move up one more edge. I think we're going to need that there. And then we're just going to hit K. So hit K on your keyboard, get the cut tool. Then we're going to click on this end of this edge here. And we're going to go over here and then click on this edge. And we're just creating like this cut in between here. And then we're going to hit enter to fill that. So now we've got this uh, running across there like that. So now we can go to our face select. And it's at this point where we can go shift, alt, and then click on an edge here. And it's going to loop select these faces. And now you can just go around while you're holding in shift. You can just select all of these faces that I'm selecting here. So we want to select these guys like this and then these ones here and these ones. We want to select these like that and then these ones here. We want to make sure that all of these faces here are selected um, except these ones at the bottom. Don't worry about those. We don't want them selected. Okay. So these, these ones here and then we're going to go control I to inverse the selection or command I and then we're going to go X and we're going to delete those faces and now we're left with kind of like this skeleton, this exoskeleton so to speak. So what we can do now is we can go to our modifiers again and this time we're going to add a solidify modifier and we're going to just bring the thickness into the negatives here to make it go out. Depending on the direction of your normals you might have to do it the other way but for me it's going to be something like this. I'm going to make it negative um, 0.25 maybe not that much so just play around with it okay that much I don't know it's kind of really just up to you I mean how how thick do you want the metal you can stylize this as much as you want but I'm just gonna go with something like that for now I think should be okay um, now I'm also just going to um, go back into edit mode or I am in edit mode if you can't see anything in edit mode you could just simply go here to your um, your solidify modifier and click on this cage deform thing and now you can still see the, the edges and stuff so we're going to just make sure we're back in edge select here I'm going to go shift alt and just click on one of these edges here to loop select them around like this and then we're going to do something cool we're going to go S Z zero to flatten them on the Z and then we're going to hit the V key to cut it right so now we've made a cut and now that's kind of like a separate object so now if we tab out you can see that's what we have now let's make it look a little bit nicer. So we're going to actually go to our modifier stack. I'm back in object mode. So let's just minimize these guys. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a bevel modifier to give it a bit of a bevel. We're going to make sure the limit method is angle. It should be by default. And then we're going to come here to the amount. And we're going to drag that down to a much smaller value and then bump the segment count up to about three. So let's go to our object mode and let's just give this shade smooth. And that already looks pretty cool. So I'm um, yeah, that's now the outer part. That's kind of like the tricky part. The rest should be relatively easy. So um, you can leave it as it is, but you can also just go into edit mode and just select everything and go G, Z, and just move it up till it's sitting on the floor here like that. So um, we can get back to the cage later, but now what we're going to do is we're going to model like the pieces of wood or the planks that kind of fill in the spaces here. So that's as simple as you'll think. Just go to mesh, add in a cube, and then go S, Y, Scale it down like that, then S, X, scale it down. S, sorry, S, Z, I should have said, but then S, X to scale it this way. So you kind of get the point. We're just making a piece of wood. In fact, this is so easy that I probably don't even have to explain it that much. Just make something that looks like a piece of wood like that. It's that simple. Then go to your right orthographic view, G, and just move it forward. And what we're trying to do is just place it in here. So it's kind of touching up against inside of there. That's going to be our first plank of wood. And you can scale this on the Z, so S, Z, and make it as thick as you need to. But I'm just going to go something like that. And then I'm going to go Control A and I'm going to apply the scale. 
And then I'm going to go to my add modifiers. And I'm going to give it a bevel modifier. And I'm just going to come to the amount here and just bring that down quite a bit. So something like that. And I'm going to increase the segment count a few times. Then I'm going to go to object mode and enable shade smooth as well for that piece of wood. Now that we have that established, we can go shift D, Z and move it up. And we're going to bring up one up to about there. So now you can see we have two pieces of wood. And I'm just going to select both of them and I'm going to go shift D, Y and move them back to the back of the, um, the chest here, like that. And now we're going to just select one of these planks. We go to our right orthographic view and you can do this as roughly as you want. But we're going to go shift D, move this up and then rotate it a little bit. And there's probably some modifier trick you can use, you know, like an array modifier. But um, for now, I'm going to keep it just it's so simple and a little bit of random variation will help us here. So I'm going to go shift D, duplicate it again, R to rotate. And we're just roughly placing it around like this. If you want to use an array modifier with some sort of offset, go ahead. But all I'm doing in my right orthographic view, so I'm just going shift D, moving it with G and rotating it. That's all I'm doing. So just duplicating it, rotating it, G to move it. It really does not have to be um, anything too meticulous. Yeah. So just like that. And you can see as I'm coming to the end here, that shouldn't have be any gap there like that. It should fill it in nicely. And any little kind of gaps in between there kind of give it a little bit of character. And you can always select any one of the individual planks and then go S and then double tap something like Y or X or um, in this case, maybe Z and scale it along its local Z axis. So they're not all the same length. It's completely up to you. You can try little things like that. Um, but that's looking pretty cool. So now we're going to select one of these planks and it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just going to go to my top view and I'm going to go shift D to duplicate it, moving it over to the side. And I'm going to go R Z nine zero and I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to go G X and just move it in. So we're essentially just moving it in to here. Then edit mode, I'm just going to go S, X, and sorry, S, Y, and scale it down into Y. And now I'm going to go back into object mode. And I'm going to go Shift, D, Z, and just bring it down to make another plank like that. Then I'm going to select both of these planks. I'm going to go Shift, D, X, and just move them to the other side like this. And you can see how simple this has been. I mean, it's really not hard. And now we can just do the exact same thing. Select these planks here and go Shift, D, Z and just move them up and you can try and fill that space as much as possible like that. Then all you have to do is just with both of them selected tab into edit mode and then a simple little cheat here is just to select the verts and go G. So these these top verts and go S Y and scale them in on the Y like that. And you can also just grab these guys if you have to all of those verts and you can go S Y and scale them in on the Y a bit just to make the planks like that. Tab out of edit mode and now if both of those selected, you can go shift D X and move them over this side and just bring them in there like that. How's that? So now we have um, our chest here and you can also, if you want, you know, nobody, it depends on if you're going to see it, but if it bothers you, you can also just select one of these planks and just go shift D and just rotate it and just add a few to the bottom of the chest here. Um, but it's up to you about this many of them should be fine. Doesn't really matter if we're not going to be seeing it, but maybe if you want to look inside of the chest, um, that would matter to you. So, you know, just mess around with it. You kind of know the technique now, so it's not too hard. So now we have that all filled in. And I think this looks pretty cool. So one of the um, things you can also do is go ahead and add in little rivets and bolts, which I will quickly show you how to do. So um, Let's just make a few of them. So I'm going to go shift A, just add in a simple UV sphere. Go to the add UV sphere and we don't want too many polys. So let's just make the segment something like 12. Okay. And we're going to make the rings something like eight. That should be fine. And now we have this sphere here. We're going to move it to the side and we're going to go S Z and just flatten it onto Z. Tab into edit mode and then just in wireframe, select all the bottom verts, hit X and delete those verts. So now you have something that should look like a bit of a button like that. Tab out of edit mode, go to object mode and enable shade smooth for that. And then S to scale that one down. And now you have a little a rivet here. So I'm going to just in my right orthographic view, move it forward and I'll rotate it. I'm not too worried about precise measurements here. Then I'm going to go G and moving it over to the side. G 
just moving it about here. And this is gonna be one of those things where it's up to you to decide where you wanna place rivets, but I'm gonna go with something like that. Then I'm gonna go Shift D, Z, bring one down. About there. And then I'm gonna go Shift D, Z, bring one up, but this one's gonna be a bit smaller. I'm just gonna scale it down. So just something like that should be fine. Maybe scale it on the Z a bit. And now I'm gonna just select these three by holding in Shift. Then I'm gonna go Shift D, and I'm gonna go X and scale and move them along the X. And I'm gonna do that again, Shift D, X, Shift D, X. And don't worry if you don't place it exactly the same as the other side. Um, if it's not mirrored, then that's a little bit more accurate because in real life, nothing is 100% symmetrical. So um, let's just do the same thing. So I'm gonna to go to my top view and I'm gonna go Shift D with those guys selected, move them back here. Then I'm gonna rotate them around and just place them against here. Then I'm gonna go Shift D, just doing the exact same thing. Shift D, moving them over, and then Shift D again to duplicate, moving over, rotating them a bit. So just something like that. And now what I'm gonna do, did you guys see the how I've done that? I'm gonna just go and kick this into time-lapse since you guys know how to do um, duplicate them and I'm just gonna place them a few more places. So there you go, I've gone ahead and added in some more rivets to the chest here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just add some basic locks and things. So you could leave it like this if you wanted to, but I'm gonna probably delete this rivet here and make space for a little simple lock mechanism. By the way, you don't have to do this like I said. So let's go Shift A. Uh, let's just add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder, let's just leave it as it is. And in our front view, we're gonna go R, Y, 9, 0. And we're just gonna hit S to scale that down. I'm gonna go G, Z, and we're just moving it up. So we're just bringing this little cylinder to the front here. Okay, and just like that, scaling it down. Okay, and then we're gonna go to our object mode, enable shade smooth, control A and apply to scale. And let's give this a bevel modifier, and then bring that amount down, and increase the segment count. So we're just making the lock mechanism thing here. And um, yeah. Let's just also add a little plate coming down. So I'm gonna go tab into edit mode. I'm gonna go to my edge select, just selecting an edge here. And then I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate that edge. And there you can see I've duplicated the edge. And I'm gonna hit E to extrude it. And I'm gonna extrude the edge like this and then E to extrude it. And I'm just bringing it down whoop, to about there. So that's where I'm adding it to. I'm gonna select this guy and just extrude it up. And you can move all of this back just a little bit, just like that. And this is select the actual um, lock, the plate here. And we're just gonna hit E to extrude it out, like that. And now we have that mechanism there. We're gonna go to object mode, just make sure to enable shades move for that. Now we have that simple mechanism. Now it's, it's too wide, just go S, X and scale it down on the X a little bit. So now we can just simply add a basic um, padlock thing to it. So let's just quickly model that. So a quick way to do that is just to add in a cube. Just bring it forward and we're gonna go S just to scale it down. And then S, Y, just flatten it onto Y. And G, Z to move it up. And just model a really basic little lock. You can add, as, you can spend as much time as you want, but for the tutorial's sake, to keep it a little bit shorter, I'm just gonna um, keep this as basic as possible. So just something like this. I'm gonna select everything, Control B just to bevel it, and I'm gonna roll the middle mouse button to add in some more cuts. And then while I'm in edit mode, I'm gonna go Shift A, and I'm just gonna add in a simple um, torus. And I'm gonna go G, Y, move the torus forward, S to scale it down a bit, G, Z to move that torus up. And with the torus still active, I'm gonna go R, X, 9, 0. I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm just gonna scale it down a bit more. So just something like that, I'm gonna move it back. 
And what we want to do is we want to go Shift D and then R Z nine zero to duplicate it and rotate it like that. And I'm going to go G Y. I'm going to move it back into here. And now let's just select the lock and the the part of it here, and just bring those two down. I was trying to let them lay there like that. And with this one here, you can keep it like this. But what I would like to do is just bring this part forward. Okay, and then just delete the half of it like this. And then you can just select these verts and just extrude them down like that. And that's going to make a bit of a padlock. So we're just going to quickly add that in. And now we can just bring this guy down a little bit, this lock, make the lock part. Okay? And that's how you make a quick, dirty lock. And like I said, I would add a lot more detail to this if it had more time. But just for tutorial sake, I'm just going to keep it really basic like that. You can add a little keyhole. I think that's probably what this needs. It's just a little keyhole. But I might do that later on and just show you what the final result looks like. But I'm not going to add it into the tutorial. Just trying to keep it super basic. And if you wanted to, you can also go ahead and just add some basic um, little handles on the side here and stuff. I might add some of that in later just as an example. But for now, the tutorial, the modeling side of the tutorial is pretty much done. What we're going to do next is we're going to add some basic lighting to this and then add some really cool materials, um, basic materials, and just make it really um, look awesome. So go ahead and open up your browser and you're going to want to just type in something like seamless old metal texture and just find one that you can use that's seamless and just kind of looks like a bit of a dirty metal. I've already got one that I've downloaded a few years ago that I've got on my computer and that's the one I'm going to be using. And in the second, um, I'll quickly show you. And then the second, so I just got these two, a little folder on my desktop where I downloaded these two. And this one here, it's just this wood, um, wooden texture and it's for free. I'm going to put a link in the description to the pixels link where you can download this wooden um, texture. So go ahead, download that one and put it in a folder on your desktop and then get yourself a seamless metal texture. So once you have those two simple um, textures in place, and I just put mine in a folder, like I said, um, get back into your blend file and now we're gonna add some basic materials. So let's start by first of all, just um, grouping all of the things together. So, and you can see over here in our default collection, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. So let's just um, simplify things a bit. Let's just drop that down. And let's just hold in shift and just select all of the planks of wood just to make it easier. Let's just select all the planks of wood. Okay, just like that. Making sure all of the panels of wood are selected. And once you have them all active or selected, you can hit M, the M key on your keyboard and just go new collection and call it planks. And just go OK. And now you can see we have a new collection up here called planks. We can just hit the little eye here just to hide it. And now we can just select a frame and anything that's kind of metallic. So in this case, everything here is going to be metal, same material. We're just going to select it and we'll just leave it on here. Let's just double click on this collection. Let's just call it metal. So now we have that metal collection and now we have our wooden planks, which you can um, hide when we need to. So let's just start by just these metal guys here. And let's just select the main frame here, this one here. Let's go over to our shading workspace. And when we're in our shading workspace here, we're going to hit Z and we're just simply going to go into our material preview. So make sure you're in your material preview. And if this is selected, we're going to hit new and let's just call it metal. So we're going to call this material metal. And then we're going to go select our principled BSDF. And if you actually go to your edit preferences, you can go to your add-ons then come up here to the search and just type in node and make sure to enable node wrangler. So once you have Node Wrangler enabled, if you select your principal shader, you can go Control T or Command T, and it'll automatically add in these three nodes for you here. So we're just going to move them over to the side. Then we're going to click on Open, and we're going to go to wherever you saved your texture. So let's grab a metal seamless texture, whichever one you guys found. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And then we're going to come over here. And instead of having flat projection, we're going to come here and make it box. And we don't want to be relying on UVs, so we're trying to avoid UV unwrapping. So let's take the object coordinate and plug it into the vector here. So now it's actually being box projected um, onto our um, object here using these coordinates. And you can mess around with the scale here if you want, but for now, I'm happy with the scale of this. I'm just going to leave it at that. And because we only have our metal collection here enabled, we're only seeing all the metal objects. While we have this main metal frame active, 
if we hit A to select everything else, and we still have this me metal frame as the main active element, we can go Control L, and then we can go Link Materials. And now all of them have that same material, and it's all looking good, but they're not all at the same scale. So we're, while we still have everything selected, we can now go Control A and make sure to apply the scale. And now everything will kind of, um, the texture will be um, represented at the same scale on all of our objects here. Because it kind of uses the scale of the individual objects to determine how it's going to um, procedurally place this texture over the surfaces. So at the moment it looks really flat and boring because we don't have any lighting and we haven't really messed around with the material settings here themselves. But let's also just quickly get the wooden material applied. So let's just hide these metal parts. And let's just go to our collection here and just enable the planks collection to bring all of our wooden planks. And let's just select any one of these planks. Let's go new. This is called wood. And with the principal shader selected, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go control T or command T to add in these nodes. But this time, we're not gonna worry about um, the mapping node. So just get rid of the mapping node and the texture coordinate. And we're gonna click on open and we're gonna go to that um, the one I said I'll put in the description below. So that's this um, image here, the wooden image. We're gonna go open image. And at the moment, um, we're probably not gonna see anything. Okay, you can see something, but it's not looking the way we want it to look. So we're gonna go into our UV editing workspace, like so. And we're now going to go to our front orthographic view with all of the selected. We're gonna go U and we're gonna go project from view. Now over here in this window, we can select the projection and we can go R to rotate it and S to scale and we can place it on one of these planks here. And now if we go over here, we hit Z, we go material preview, we can see what that looks like. So let's quickly tab out of edit mode here. And while that plank is still active, we're gonna hit A to select everything. Then we're gonna go Control L and we're gonna go link those materials. So now all of these have that same material. Now we're gonna just simply select all of them and we're gonna tab into edit mode and now you can go into your front view or whichever angle you want and you can go to your face select here and you can just select different faces and you can go U, project from view and you can just come over here and you can rotate them, scale them, try placing them on some unique pieces of wood. You don't want them all to look exactly the same. So um, all I'm gonna do now here is I'm just going to go through them and just projecting them and I'm just gonna rotate them, trying to find some unique places to place them. And we don't want any sort of unnecessary repetition. So keeping things as unique as possible would be really good. So I'm gonna just quickly, since you guys know how to do this now, I've shown you, I'm just gonna quickly kick this into time-lapse where all I'm doing is just selecting faces and just projecting them from view. And I'm just simply moving them around over here rotating them and trying to give them something that looks um, different than all of the others. Do something like that, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly finish that off. And now you can see I've finished UV unwrapping all of them, just really basic unwraps. And you can do the inside faces as well, but for now I'm not gonna really bother with that. So let's go over here to our collections and let's bring back that metal collection. So now we have the metal parts and the planks and all of the textures themselves are actually now applied. So what we're gonna be doing next is actually working on a principled um, shaders themselves to add some um, nice effects, but we also need to add in some lighting first so we can see what we're doing. So let's go back to our layout here. And first of all, let's just go to our renderer, our render settings. We wanna make sure we're working in Eevee and then we're gonna enable ambient occlusion. We're gonna come down and then also enable screen space reflections. Now, once we have those enabled, we can go shift A, go to your light sections and add in an area light. So I'm gonna to go to my front view. I'm gonna move this area light here. I'm gonna rotate it in towards the subject matter. Then I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm gonna move it forward. And then I'm gonna hit R to rotate it in towards the chest here. Then I'm gonna to go to my light settings. I wanna increase the size to about four meters. And then I'm gonna take the power and make it 300. 
Now I'm going to hit Z and I'm going to go rendered. And now I can see my chest is being lit here and I got some nice, um, yeah, this looks nice. So I'm going to just also grab this light here and in the top view I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to have one coming from this side here. But this one, I'm going to make the strength 150, so only half as strong. And in where this is really going to look cool is going to be the rim light. So let's go Shift A, add in a point light, G to move it up. And let's scale the radius of that up under our light settings and increase the power of it quite a bit. So about 160 should be good. And then we're going to go G and we're going to move it behind the chest. And now we need to add in a camera. So I'm going to come roughly about here and then go Shift A and I'm going to go and add in a camera. And if that camera is still active, I'm going to hit zero to go to camera view and then G middle mouse button, I'm just going to zoom back. Then I'm going to go G, Z and just move the camera up. So you guys should already know how to place a basic camera. Then go to your camera settings. Let's make the focal length 95 and just zoom back. So just placing a camera, this isn't really a camera tutorial. So I'm just going to keep it super basic like this. And then I'm going to go Shift A. I'm just going to add in a plane and go S to scale that up. I'm going to go to my world settings. I'm just going to make the world a little bit darker. Then I'm going to select the plane. I'm going to go to my shading workspace. Now I'm going to go into camera view, hit Z, make sure you're in rendered mode. And now with that plane selected, let's go new. Let's just call it um, floor. And let's just come here to our principal shader and let's just make that black. Make it a little bit metallic and then bring the roughness down to make it slightly reflective. Now we can select this area light here, or this spotlight. I'm going to go Shift D, and we're just going to move it along the X, just like that. So what we're trying to do is just create some nice backlighting here. So it kind of gives us a little bit of this rim lighting effect, as you can see. Okay, so it just makes the, the um, treasure chest pop out from the background, and it looks pretty cool. So mess around with that as much as you want just to kind of make it stand out. It's a really cool way of doing that. Rim lighting, maybe decrease the size of that one a bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually select one of the metal parts here and let's start working on the metal material. So let's obviously come to the metallic slider and we're just gonna drag that all the way up to one and already it's starting to look like metal and we'll just come take the roughness and drag that down a bit. And that's looking pretty cool. Now you could add um, some roughness or some bump to this. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. We're just keeping it super basic. Now let's select the wood itself. And with the wood here, we're just gonna take the roughness here and just drag it down a bit. But with this one, we will add some texture. So let's move the image texture to the side. Then we're gonna go Shift A, search. Let's type in color and get a color ramp. Then take the color output here and plug it into the factor of our color ramp. And let's go Shift A search and type in B U M P for bump. Then we're going to place it here and we're going to take the color and plug it into the height of the bump. And we're going to take the normal output of the bump and plug it into the normal of the principal shader. Now we can see we have some bump. We're going to come to the strength and make it 0.1, like so. And you can do that exact same um, thing to the metal if you want, but I'm not going to do that. So just something like that. You can mess around with the reflective amount or the roughness amount of the wood. But this is just about creating a super quick and dirty um, chest in Blender. You can also just select the background here and mess around with some of the things on there as well. It's completely up to you what you're trying to achieve. But yeah, also try just messing around with your lights. So I might move my area light a little bit more forward and see what that looks like in my camera view. Um, also mess around with the strength and the scale of your scene is also gonna determine how uh, much you want to increase or decrease the strength of the light because the scale of your scene does affect um, these numbers here. That's also very important to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, that's how you make a basic treasure chest. And I'm also going to just select my camera. I'm going to enable depth of field. And I'm just going to come to the drop down, select this little eyedropper. I'm going to select the chest. And then I'm going to come to the F stop and just drag that down quite a bit, something like 0 0.5. And that's going to give it some nice soft focus like that. So now, you know, there we have it. That is pretty much a basic treasure chest in Blender. So let's just quickly save all of this. 
And let's go render and let's go render image. And here we have it, this is our final render. This is what it looks like. So this is by no means a very realistic or detailed um, treasure chest in Blender. This is just a very basic, quick and dirty way to make it, and I'm showing you the technique. There's quite a few little details here that are missing, like maybe a, a hole in the lock here, maybe some latches on the side to grab onto. Definitely add some more um, information or some more nodes into the metal texture there even the wood, just to add some more um, surface imperfections and stuff like that. But other than that, this has just been a really basic way of making a treasure chest in Blender that looks relatively cool. So I'll be making this model available on my Patreon and um, just check out some of my other content if this tutorial wasn't exactly your thing. And um, I hope you guys stay safe and I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.